You open your laptop, type some words that look like gibberish, press enter, and suddenly your computer starts doing exactly what you want. It sorts your photos, sends out emails, or even plays games with you. Magic, right? But how did you make it this far in life without knowing what's actually happening when you write code in Python? Today, I'll explain how Python actually works to you like you're five years old. And by the end, you'll finally understand why typing weird words into a computer can make it do practically anything you want. It turns out, it's not actually magic. Shocker, I know. It's not some tiny person hiding inside your computer, reading your comments, and frantically pressing buttons. And it's not a secret language that only super smart people can understand. What it is, actually, is a very simple way to give your computer step-by-step -step instructions, kind of like teaching a very obedient robot how to do chores. Imagine you have a really helpful friend who will do absolutely anything that you ask, but they're also incredibly literal and not very creative. This friend needs you to explain every single step of what you want them to do in the exact right order, using words that they understand. That friend is your computer, and Python is the special language you use to talk to them. Python is what we call a programming language. Think of it like learning Spanish or French, except, you know, instead of talking to people from other countries, you're talking to computers. Just like how you might say hola to say hello in Spanish, you say specific words in Python to tell your computer what to do. The difference is that your computer friend is incredibly picky about spelling and grammar. If you misspell even one word, they get confused and can't help you. Now, let's talk about what makes Python so special. There are lots of different programming languages out there, kind of like how there are lots of different human languages. Some programming languages are really complicated and require you to write lots and lots of words to do simple things. It's like having to write a 10-page essay just to ask for a glass of water. But Python is different. Python was designed to be simple and easy to read, kind of like how picture books use simple words so that kids can understand the story. When you write instructions in Python, they look almost like regular English sentences. For example, if you want to tell your computer to remember your name, you might write something like, my name equals Sarah. That's it. Your computer friend now knows that your name is Sarah and will remember it until you tell them something different. It's like writing a note and sticking it on your computer's forehead. But how does your computer actually understand these Python instructions? This is where it gets really interesting. Your computer deep down only understands one language, and it's not Python. It's a language made entirely of ones and zeros. Imagine trying to have a conversation using only the words yes and no. That's basically what your computer's brain speaks. Everything it does, from showing you pictures to playing music, is really just long strings of ones and zeros. So when you write Python code, something magical happens behind the scenes. There's a special program called an interpreter, and it acts like a translator. It takes your nice, readable Python instructions and translates them into that ones and zeros language that your computer actually understands. It's like having a friend who speaks both English and a secret robot language, and they help you and the robot talk to each other. The Python interpreter reads your code line by line from top to bottom, just like how you read a book. When it sees an instruction like, print hello world, it translates that into computer language and tells your computer to display those words on the screen. When it sees, my age equals 25, it translates that into instructions that make your computer remember that number. Every single line of Python code gets turned into hundreds of thousands of ones and zeros that make your computer do exactly what you wanted. Here's something really cool about Python. It comes with a huge toolbox of pre-built instructions. Imagine if every time you wanted to make a sandwich, you had to first invent bread, then invent peanut butter, then invent jelly, then figure out how to put them together. And that would take forever, right? Well, Python saves you from this problem by giving you lots of ready-made tools called libraries that smart people have already built. Want to work with dates and times? There's a library for that. Want to download information from websites? There's a library for that as well. Maybe you want to create charts and graphs. Guess what? There's a library for that too. It's like having a magical tool shed where every tool you could possibly need is already waiting for you, perfectly organized and ready to use. You just have to know what to ask for. This is why Python is so popular for artificial intelligence and automation. Building AI from scratch would be like trying to build a car by first mining iron ore and then refining steel. Instead, Python lets you use pre-built AI libraries that other people have spent years perfecting. You can tell your computer to recognize faces and photos, understand human speech, or even write stories, all by using these ready-made tools and writing just a few lines of simple instructions. Now let's talk about automation, because this is where Python really shines in everyday life. Automation is just a fancy word for making your computer do boring, repetitive tasks so that you don't have to. Remember our helpful friend analogy? 
Well, your computer friend never gets tired, never gets bored, and never makes mistakes as long as you give them good instructions. Say you get 50 emails every day and you need to sort them into different folders. Doing this by hand would take forever and be incredibly boring. But with Python, you can write instructions that tell your computer exactly how to sort those emails automatically. You might say something like, if the email is from my boss, put it in the important folder. If it's about meetings, put it in the meetings folder. If it contains the word sale, put it in the spam folder. Your computer friend will happily sort through all 50 emails in seconds, never getting tired or making mistakes. Or maybe you need to rename hundreds of photos on your computer. Instead of clicking on each photo individually and typing out a new name, you can write a Python program that renames all of them at once according to whatever pattern you want. You could tell it to add the date to each file name, or organize them by the location where they were taken, or anything else that you could possibly think of. The beautiful thing about Python is that once you write these instructions, you can use them over and over again. It's like teaching your helpful friend how to do a chore once, and then they can do that chore perfectly every time you ask, without you having to explain it again. You could write a Python program today that organizes your photos, and then use that same program every week for the rest of your life. This is also why Python is everywhere in the modern world, even in places that you might not expect. When you ask Siri or Alexa a question, there's probably Python code helping to understand what you said and figure out how to answer. When Netflix recommends a movie that you might like, that's Python analyzing your watch habits and comparing them to millions of other people. When you use GPS to navigate anywhere, Python might be helping to calculate the fastest route. Python is also what many websites use behind the scenes. When you log into your social media account, Python code checks your password and loads your personal feed. When you buy something online, Python handles the payment processing and updates the inventory. When you upload a photo, Python might automatically resize it or add filters. And all of this happens invisibly, in the background, making your online experience smooth and seamless. But you don't need to be building the next Facebook to benefit from Python. Regular people use Python to solve everyday problems all the time. Some people write Python programs to automatically back up their important files. Others use it to track their spending and create budget reports. Teachers use Python to automatically grade certain types of assignments. Small business owners even use it to manage inventory or send automated emails to customers. The reason Python can do all these different things is because it's incredibly flexible. It's like having a Swiss army knife that can transform into any tool you need. Need to work with spreadsheets? Python can do that. Need to create a simple website? Python can do that too. Maybe you need to analyze data or create visualizations. Python excels at that. And if you need to control other programs on your computer, Python is more than capable. Learning Python is also far easier than you might think. Unlike some programming languages that require you to understand complex computer science concepts before you can even do anything useful, Python lets you start solving real problems almost immediately. You can write your first useful Python program in just a few lines of code. It might be something simple, like a program that reminds you to take breaks while working, but it's still a real program that does something helpful. The Python community is also incredibly welcoming and helpful. Programmers around the world have created millions of tutorials, examples, and explanations to help beginners learn. If you get stuck on something, you can almost always find someone online who has had the same problem and figured out how to solve it. It's like having access to a global classroom where everyone is happy to help each other learn. What makes Python particularly powerful is how it handles complexity. You can start with simple instructions and then gradually build up to more sophisticated programs. It's like learning to cook. You might start by making toast, then move on to scrambled eggs, then pasta, and then eventually work your way up to elaborate multi-course meals. Each step builds on what you learned before, and Python's design makes this progression feel natural and manageable. Python also plays well with other technologies. It can talk to databases, connect to the internet, control hardware devices, and integrate with other software. This means you can use Python as the central brain that coordinates different parts of a larger system. You might have Python pulling data from a website, processing it, storing results in a database, and then sending you an email summary all automatically. So, let's recap this whole adventure into the world of Python. Python is a simple programming language that lets you give step-by-step -step instructions to your computer using words that are almost like regular English. Your computer doesn't actually understand Python directly, but a special translator called an interpreter converts your Python instructions into the ones and zeros language that computers really speak. Python comes with tons of pre-built tools that let you do complex things without starting from scratch, and it's flexible enough to handle anything from simple automation tasks to powering major websites and AI systems. Now go forth and automate something. Your computer is just sitting there, waiting for you to tell it what to do.